All right, so it's me, Josh, here, working on the GPR SHO project, or kind of to put it in the simple terms, the jet ski that's getting the really big engine swap. So today what I'm doing is fiberglass work. This is by no means a fully comprehensive guide to doing fiberglass. This is just kind of showing what I'm doing with my project and how I'm getting it done. To start out with, you're gonna need some fiberglass cloth. Now when you open it up, it's gonna look like this. This is the weave type, which is the type that we prefer. This kind is good. Then we take our scissors, cut out the shapes that we need. Generally, we do about five to seven layers is kind of a standard-ish. And then you need your fiberglass resin. So here I have the cheap kind that you can get from uh, pretty much any uh, big store that carries multiple uh, things. Well, there's this stuff, the actual good stuff for doing fiberglass work on your personal watercraft. This is an epoxy resin, which is better for the holes that are made out of the... For some reason, the whole material eludes my mind, but it's the Kawasaki's and Yamaha's don't actually use a uh, fiberglass per se. I mean, it's a t fiberglass type material. I People want to call it like, is it, oh my gosh, I, I can't think of it. It's like PVC or something like that. But anyways, the sea use fiberglass except for on the Spark because the sea Spark is made out of plastic. But anyways, this is the fiberglass resin comes with this cap on here inside there you got your hardener this is the resin hardener you got to mix it up to make it work all right it's going to be a very messy process so you're going to want to have some gloves some of you may find this silly but i actually like to tape my gloves to my shirt and this is so i don't get the resin on my wrists because i find it very annoying to get the resin on my wrists all right, here's inside. I've got a fiberglass up this hole, that hole, and the holes that I made in the back there. Um, this center one I'm going to do something different with because the clearance is so tight here that I'm just going to seal along the edges using some Marine or 3M 5200. So I've got my fiberglass sheets cut out to the size of this particular hole here. Now, all I gotta do is mix up some resin and then I'll show you how I lay this all down. Surface prep is a huge part of it and before I lay fiberglass down anywhere, I scuff it with sandpaper and then I wipe it clean with some acetone on rag. All right, so my fiberglass, the super cheap kind, came with this handy dandy little mixing jar on the top, which I like to use for mixing. And usually, I will just take my fiberglass and dunk it in there. But sometimes I'll like to use a little paintbrush depending on what kind of a job I'm doing. All right, this might seem pretty arbitrary and not necessary information, but you do need to poke a hole in your hardener. Most likely, if you get the cheap stuff, it will be pretty much exactly the same as what I got here. Although, if you get the nice types of this resin stuff, you can get them in like a one-to-one -one pump system. Okay, now I've got the lid off this. I got a hole in that. I'm gonna go ahead and pour a bit of my d just delightful syrupy honey mixture into my mixing bowl. And I got a little bit more than I wanted to there, but that's okay. In my mind, I was just gonna lay one piece, but I guess I'm gonna lay multiple pieces. So this has, the hardener has to be mixed into here. And honestly, just a couple of drops will do you just fine. Especially the hotter the area that you're working, the faster this stuff dries. So fortunately it's kind of cold out, it's winter time, so this will take a while to set, which is totally fine. Being that I have lots of time for this project to, I'm trying to say I have plenty of time to get this project done and I have plenty of time to let this set and cure. And if I need to, I can get a torch or a uh, heater and heat this up carefully, obviously. All right, hopefully I got you guys at a reasonably decent angle there. Um, this is a very messy part. I obviously need to get the liquid all over my piece here. 
and so far it's being a bit of a pill but give it a good dunk there and just kind of get it make sure it's permeated you can really tell when it's uh fully permeated it kind of changes to a different color now i like to put a little bit of syrup as i'm calling it or fiberglass resin on the edges just to make sure that when I lay it on there, it really sticks. Now I'm just kind of pushing the edges down, making sure that it's making full contact with the area that it needs to. I just want to make sure the actual part where it's sticking is really got all the air bubbles out of it. All right, I kind of forgotten how much of a pain it can be. I uh, ended up using some blue tape to kind of hold it in position. I gotta try to get this bubble out as well. Uh, it's very difficult to cover a hole like that. You want usually want a nice solid backing when you're doing this. So obviously the first layer is gonna be the most difficult. It's nice to work in a well ventilated area because the odor has kind of a mind melting smell to it. And uh, Definitely can get a headache from the smell that the resin makes. Alright guys, I'm kind of finishing up with my very first layer of fiberglass. But I'm taking my special tool being a screwdriver. I'm just trying to make sure that gravity is not pulling my fiberglass down and making a bubble in this sort of unusual contoured area. Because I do need it to really lay flat onto the contour that I've made in this particular spot. There's going to be a lot of cleanup just from this first layer, but hopefully the, the layers after will be a bit easier. All right, it is the next day doing this fiberglass stuff here, and I actually realized when I was all done yesterday that I had been wearing these goggles on my head the whole time, which was completely by accident and kind of embarrassing, but, you know, I, I'm just going to leave that in there, and I'm not going to do, like, reshoots for the video because... That genuinely happened, so we'll just leave it in there. Even though it is kind of embarrassing. I'm gonna go ahead and use this Marine 5200 to seal up the center section down there. Uh, just with how much, how close the clearance is down there, I need, I don't really have room to lay layers of fiberglass, so let's use this around the edges to seal it up. All right, there's that. 200 taken care of always a nasty job working with that stuff but it is very much permanent it's not like your regular silicone or rtv silicone type stuff that stuff has to be taken off with a grinder if you ever have to remove it all right here's something i haven't said is why am i feeling in the holes here because obviously they're not open holes to the water like underneath the ski um so this is this ski is a like a twin wall or an inner hole type design where <clears throat> basically the inner hole stays dry like in between the inner hole and the outer hole so it's just kind of like dry air space and basically i just don't want water getting in between them and getting caught in there and making the ski real heavy so like i've experienced this before and maybe you guys have too is where you maybe crack the bottom of your hole and you don't really realize that you ride it around for a while and you kind of like, man, the ski seems like it's getting slower and slower and slower. I can't figure out what's wrong. Well, generally what that is, is the water gets in between the outer hole and the inner hole. So it doesn't make your craft sink, but it does make it way heavier getting all the water in there. And I find for myself, I usually just drill a spot on the outer hole to drain the water out and then fill that back in and obviously patch the cracked area. I'm just sitting here waiting for this fiberglass to dry. I've literally got a little heater inside here trying to speed the process along. It is a temperature controlled heater. So I have it set to 90 degrees and I don't believe that's going to cause any problems. It's not going to like catch it on fire. So yeah. <sighs> Anyways, I got the seat on just to keep the heat in, this thing on to keep the heat in. But while I was sitting here bored, I was taking a look at this motor and I was saying to myself, I wonder what it looks like underneath the valve cover. So I went ahead and took all the valve cover bolts out and let's take a look. 
All right, I've got the camera set over here on the exhaust side. These are the exhaust ports, which I normally have taped up, but I was test fitting the exhaust just the other day. Which reminds me, I need to tape that back up. But there is the inside of the engine. Anyways, you can see it's extremely clean inside, which obviously is good. This engine has, oh geez, this engine has a lot of hours on it. Um, I believe it was in the 300s somewhere, which for a PWC is considered quite a bit, but you know, in like other worlds such as cars, that's essentially nothing. Um, this, I wanted to check the timing chain for, you know, looseness. Uh, it's all nice and tight, and I was just wanting to check the guides and stuff to make sure they were all in good shape still. It all looks really good inside here. I'm actually surprised at how clean it is, and how nice all of the cam lobes look. So, yeah, it, it basically looks like new. And my comparison is from the car world, of course. <laughs> really pleased with uh, how that engine looks inside it's interesting because it did come out of a rental ski so you would expect i don't know it just kind of defies expectations the, i mean the exterior of the fcr this came out of you can definitely tell it, it's had its bumps and bruises but the engine is really clean and nice seeming so i'm happy about that but this was just what i was doing for fun while i was waiting for the fiberglass to dry so now I'm back doing some fiberglass and it's been a couple of days drying here and all that stuff. Jason is sort of helping me. Well, I mean, he is helping me. I shouldn't say sort of. Well, sort of. Using a heat gun on the stuff to get it all firmed up. Oh, yeah. It's just too cold around here to really dry this fiberglass out or cure it. I guess is a better way of saying it. Jason is cutting me some cubes. A four by four? Yeah. And... The thing is, my hands got a little bit of resin on them, so I can't really touch the cloth without screwing it up. But Jason said something really fun, or one of us said something really fun, about how Jacob doesn't use gloves when he does fiberglass. He just goes full savage and just does it barehanded and just squishes the stuff around with his hands. He just likes to raw dog it, you know? And it's just funny that he's so hardcore. <laughs> he's so real come up with this technique for mixing the resin. I've got a larger bucket this time, and you really gotta mix this stuff up a lot. So I went ahead and shoved an Allen wrench in the end of my drill. I think you can see exactly where I'm going with this. Ooh, I got a few too many sprinkles in this one. This is gonna be a hot batch. Turn this up. Oh, there we go. Just like baking a cake. Hey now, hey now. I just want to talk about how it's a lot easier to do this fiberglass work when you have an assistant, somebody who can like hand you a rag when you need it or cut you another piece of cloth because you still have some more resin in your bucket. Also, it was nice having a larger bucket for the resin. I could actually dunk everything and sort of squeegee it with my hands so it wasn't so heavy with the resin. And also, Having this kind of be the second layer in some spots, I could actually, uh, it was actually much easier than the first layer. But like when you're repairing your hole, like if you had like a crack here or here or whatever, you would basically just sand out the cracked area and then you would lay your fiberglass on it, which is really easy because you still have a backing. But when you're filling just a big hole like this, like what I'm doing, it's a lot more difficult. So check out this awesome fiberglass cloth that Jacob dropped off for me. He got himself 50 yards of this stuff. And it's just like the weave stuff that I have, but it's a way, way tighter weave. And it really holds together, unlike the one I have, which kind of likes to fray off. So Jacob also dropped off some good uh, resin and hardener. This is actually some good stuff and not that cheap crap that I normally get. This is nice, it's got the pump system, so one pump of this to one pump of this. So the first layer of fiberglass has cured now, and I'm going to go ahead and sand it down a bit so that we can get ready to put on layer number two. I need something with a little bit more power. Here's my fiberglass plan for this. I'm going to use the cheap resin to 
fill the large holes and then I'm going to go over it with the good stuff because it's really hard to lay uh, cloth and resin on a big open hole so that I'm using the cheap stuff to cover the hole so I'll have a good backing for the good stuff. So for instance right here I finished my first layer this is the cheap stuff all it is is a nice solid backing for my good stuff the good stuff will come over and down onto the SMC which is what these Yamahas and Kawasaki's are made of rather than fiberglass and SMC is a fiberglass type material but the epoxy resin sticks much better to the SMC than the fiberglass resin all right there's kind of a look at it it's looking pretty good it's all sort of sanded down I did lay a little patch right there but I'm ready to do some more fiberglass here and obviously when I'm all done it's all gonna get a lot more cleaned up I wish I would have used the good uh, epoxy resin for the entire project if I could go back that is what I would do uh, messing with that cheap stuff actually kind of slowed me down because I really had to I mean it was nice to have that backing but honestly I could have done it it would have been just all easier if I used the good stuff the whole time that cheap uh, fiberglass resin didn't really want to stick to this SMC material very well. But here's where I am at. I threw some white on that patch just because I want to see what it would look like. And I'm probably going to end up sanding it down a little bit make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, that one up there is drying. And those are pretty much done as well. But I am going to go ahead and take care of the pump tunnel reinforcement here since I am already doing fiberglass. Should be pretty easy because it's got a nice solid backing. I have created a little template for it already. And so I can get all the cloth cut out to the perfect shape. I am going to uh, lay it down and use a paintbrush in this particular scenario. I think it's going to be easier. I just finished the pump tile reinforcement did a couple extra layers while I was there just for good measure um, so take a look you can see it's uh, super clear that epoxy that I used the epoxy resin uh, those blue lines are my just pen markings on the fiberglass cloth to make my cutouts but as you can see it turned out pretty darn good I really like how it laid down so I'm pretty pleased with that now it's just a matter of waiting for my fiberglass to dry. And this just came today. My pump set up. I was able to get the entire thing for just a couple hundred bucks. So that I'm pretty pleased about. Um, it's just off an FX SHO. Just needed the shorter drive shaft really. But it costed about, I think it was like 190 for an aftermarket, just the drive shaft. And then I'd have to do all the bearings and you know, pull the other pump apart but this way for a few dollars more I got this and I'll have a bunch of extra spare parts going forward which obviously for us that's a good thing so I just wanted to take a minute to say that having the nice resin and wherever that cloth went here it is the nice cloth makes a absolute huge difference I was using the cheap cloth and the cheap resin before. Here's the cheap resin. Cheap stuff for this. There's even worse cloth that I just never use. But yeah, having the good resin and the good cloth makes a huge difference for how easy everything lays down. How it kind of sticks. How it tacks up. How it dries. Just everything. This is expensive. But it's worth it. So there you go. Hey guys, we've gotten the new metric from YouTube and it shows that we've got a lot more female watchers. So we just want to thank everyone who is using like their wife's tablet or whatever and not changing the profile when they watch our videos. It looks good on YouTube and we really appreciate that guys. And something else that would really help us out is if you could just click on one of the videos at the end screen, like wherever he puts it. And uh, just get it started. YouTube loves that crap right now. Thanks. Guys.